Apple just released macOS Ventura 13.4 alongside iOS 16.5, watchOS 9.5, and updates for all of the other Apple operating systems. So in this video, we're going to cover all of the new features, the changes, and the bug fixes for this new version of macOS. So starting off with the size of this update, you can see it came in at a large 11.77 gigabytes. That update will be most likely smaller for you if you are coming from the latest public release but I was coming from a beta to the final so that update size is relatively large now if we go into about this Mac to check out the new build number we can see Ventura 13.4 the new build number there is 22f66 all right so now what's new here in Mac OS 13.4 and the first thing is that we now have the new system for installing betas that was introduced on iOS 16.4 so if we go back to our settings and general and then to software updates you will notice that we have a new section here under beta updates where it shows our developer beta and if you tap on this eye right here if you click on the eye you can see that you have the option to choose between getting no beta updates developer beta updates or public beta updates now this also depends on if you have a paid developer account so you can see down here at the bottom we have this little you know caution sign telling us that our apple id is not currently enrolled in the selected beta program but if i switch this over to the public beta you might see that you have access to the public betas now you could also change this if you go to use a different apple id for beta updates you can sign into your apple id that you have registered as a you know paid developer on apple's developer site if it's different from your icloud Apple ID. So this new system is much better because now you don't need to have a profile installed to get beta updates. We have a couple of new features in the Apple News application. So if you go over to the sidebar and go to the sports section, this is an all new section inside of news. You will see my sports where you can see top stories, scores and schedules. You can see the teams that you're following along with highlights and a for you section. Now, if you go up to the top right, you can break this down by the specific sport you're looking for. So if I wanted to switch from this main page to just looking at MLB, I can do that and I get a MLB, you know, centric page here where it only shows MLB scores and schedules and highlights. And if we go back to the main page of the sports tab, you can see under scores and schedule, we have this open in Apple TV button. And if you press on that, you will see it will open up that game in Apple TV for you to watch. And it's a very easy little shortcut to get to those games. This update also finally fixes one of the biggest bugs I've had with the Apple Watch when it comes to unlocking my Mac. So it says resolves an issue where auto unlock with Apple Watch does not log you in to your Mac. So now that has been fixed with version 13.4. So if you have this set up to unlock with your watch, that should work as expected now and log you in properly. We also have a fix for Bluetooth, and this is mainly related to Macs that are not MacBooks, but there was an issue where keyboards would connect slowly to a Mac after restarting. So this would happen to me on my Mac Studio. My wireless Bluetooth you know, keyboard would always take about 10 to 15 seconds to connect after I restarted my Mac. And it's been going on on for like over a year now so thankfully that has also been fixed there's also a bug fix for voiceover so it says addresses a voiceover issue with navigating to landmarks on web pages and then the final thing mentioned on the release notes here is an issue that has been fixed related to screen time where your settings may reset or not sync across all devices and as I mentioned in my iOS 16.5 video I was facing this issue myself on my Mac and on my iPhone and my iPad pretty much every device my screen time settings or my you know when I would have an app limit like a, a time frame set on my app limit right here it would not sync across my other devices so for example if I had an app limit for an hour on YouTube if I spent up my whole hour on my iPhone and then I went over to my iPad I would still be able to get on YouTube for another hour it would not sync my usage on my iPhone so that has been fixed here in 16.5 and Mac OS 13.4 Safari has also been updated to version 16.5 and we have a couple of things that I wanted to mention here so first off you can see that we have a new feature for Apple pay so it says Apple pay is now supported for pre-orders and deferred 
payments. We also have a few CSS features that have been added. So we have added support for CSS nesting. We have added support for user valid and user invalid. And then down here, we also have another CSS feature where you can have the initial support for color mix CSS values. And there's also a few resolved issues. I'm not gonna read all of them, but one of them is right here. Fixed scroll to text fragment, sometimes scrolling to the top after reloading the page. So if you had any issues with the scroll to text fragment, you know, scrolling up to the top after reloading a page, that has been fixed. And then moving on over to the release notes for macOS 13.4, we can see a few things I wanted to mention here. So first off, Apple Studio Display, we have a known issue where it says, Apple Studio Display firmware updates start showing progress, but never complete. And you can see there is a workaround for this, but just know if you have an Apple Studio Studio display, that bug is still remaining after updating. And under file bookmark, we have another resolved issue. This one says, fixed a regression in macOS Ventura 13.3, where a security check causes bookmark resolution to fail when the path contains Unicode characters stored with composed normalization. As an example, this prevented files in Finder from opening when double clicked. And then we have a resolved issue under Swift UI and also under CSS right here as well. When it comes to security updates, we also have quite a few to discuss here. So if we go to Apple's security page and we go down to macOS Ventura 13.4, you will see we have quite a few bugs that have been addressed. You can see several bugs have been addressed here and you can search for actively exploited and we can see that there are three webkit bugs that were being actively exploited which means they're not just vulnerabilities they were actually being exploited by bad actors out in the wild and some of these are pretty nasty and it's not just webkit that was impacted either you can see this one for siri says the impact is a person with physical access to a device may be able to view contact information from the lock screen we also have one right above that related to shortcuts and it says an app may be able to bypass privacy preferences there are four kernel bugs and there's even a bug related to the wi-fi which you can see all the way at the bottom down here the impact was an app may be able to disclose kernel memory so quite a few bugs have been patched with mac os ventura 13.4 so it's always a good idea to update just to make sure your device is as secure as possible now as far as performance and battery life goes as far as performance i haven't really noticed any change in performance I use my MacBook Pro here to edit quite a bit with Final Cut Pro and Photoshop I don't use it as my main computer but I do use it enough to know if there's a difference in performance and battery life haven't really noticed a big difference in performance although those bug fixes will make it feel a little bit better and then in terms of battery life battery life actually feels a little bit better to me on Mac OS 13.4 versus 13.3 so I would expect to see a minor minor bump up in battery life if you do have a Mac MacBook. I'm using the MacBook Pro. You can see I am using the 2021 M1 Max. So if you have an M2, you might notice even better battery life. So now let's answer the question, should you update to macOS Ventura 13.4 or should you just wait or not update at all? And I say you should absolutely update. Like I know we just talked about it, but the security fixes are pretty major, especially when they're being actively exploited. So for that reason alone, I would update. But you also get several bug fixes. You get the, for me, I had a battery life life improvement and you also get those minor feature changes and of course the big bug fix related to the Apple Watch so for all those reasons I say you should go ahead and update especially when we're this late into the Mac OS 13 cycle you're not really expecting to see any type of major bugs that are gonna make you wish you didn't update and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from Apple so I would expect to see a Mac OS Ventura 13.5 come really as soon as next week the week of of May 22nd. Now it's gonna be in beta all the way until most likely the end of June, maybe even into July, because of course right here on June 5th is when we will see iOS 17 and macOS 14. Now we don't know exactly what macOS 14 is going to be named just yet. You will have to tune in to the Worldwide Developers Conference. I will also be streaming that here on the channel, but we should see that new version of macOS announced along with all of the new features, and I will be covering that here on the channel. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is macOS Ventura 13.4. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more macOS update videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.